the reason why we have to separate tools with regards to linear assets it is usually because we have a different language when we're talking about these assets so when we look at a rail car in a hierarchy system a car has bogies the bogies have wheel sets wheel sets have wheels and we typically maintain the assets at the level we define them if we have an asset registry that has a wheel we define attributes associated with the wheel when we look at a linear asset in this case a track asset they work differently you have one long continuous asset which is the track you talk more about relationships like near to or overlapping but critically we don't maintain the entire asset at the same time and we don't renew the entire asset at once we maintain parts of the asset which means that over time it becomes more difficult to understand how the track got into the condition it is in in terms of usage over time the deterioration over time and the maintenance over time we found that we need specific tools to manage our linear assets to help us understand the current condition of the track the history of our track condition so we can predict into the future of what condition our track will be in as a more advanced demonstration of data visualization we moved to this example at the top we have a display where we have mileages and a track definition along with the track definition we have assets built on top like bridges and switches and culverts to the left across the y-axis this represents dates with the oldest date at the bottom the newest date at the top we also have color definition of the track condition green is good yellow is satisfactory and red is poor in the middle of the screen we have a gray line this represents the current date so all information below this line is from measurements all data above that line is predictions into the future now the blue line here is representing a maintenance activity maintenance was done from this point of the track through to this point of the track according to our records now below we can see that the track was in poor and satisfactory condition and above we can see that there was improvements to the track so for the most part this maintenance activity was the correct maintenance activity however when we look to the right we see that this maintenance activity did not affect the track condition in this area furthermore we see an area of track here which was not affected by the maintenance at all so it is in the exact same condition prior and after so perhaps this maintenance work was not done at all when we look at why this is happening the area where there is a poor track condition we have several switches and bridges which could have affected the maintenance in this area so the tamping couldn't have been done across this section of track therefore another form of maintenance would be required additionally what we can see in this example is black thresholds these are thresholds indicating that if maintenance isn't done prior to this point there will be a functional failure on the line and we could possibly have to implement a speed restriction something not highlighted is an area of track here which is degrading at a really fast pace we need to understand why the maintenance was successful but the deterioration rate in this section of track is a lot faster than other sections of the track when we look at the track definition we can see that there's a culvert there so further investigation of the condition of this culvert it was discovered that the culvert was collapsed the maintenance of tamping was correcting the issue but the track condition was degrading at a faster rate because of the collapsed culvert 